By the time you reach grade school, your inner creativity has probably been crushed. School sucks the creative life out of you. Your parents try to teach you to be on time and scheduled. You have to search for creativity within yourself. It has nothing to do with external forces. And at school, all you're getting are external forces. You'll be pushing against other kids, peer pressure, teacher demands. What I'm trying to say is other people are not going to tell you how to be creative. No one will teach you that in school. School does not teach you how to be creative. Any creativity that you have there is based on performance and not process. Finding your own creativity really is the key to becoming yourself. I am not a scientist. <laughs> I am an artist, and um, I grew up with actually completely no artistic training whatsoever. I, um, my parents don't know anything about art. They're great people, great parents. Um, my mother's tone deaf, and um, I didn't have any idea about being a musician, being an artist. I didn't know what art school was, believe I didn't know that you could become a musician. I thought you had to maybe be born into it by family because they knew about music and they could teach you. Even at school, I mean, I, I had a music teacher who would say, right, sing that note, and then you'd sing that note, and the teacher would say, that's a wrong note. Okay, forget it. You don't get to sing that note. I'm sure a lot of you have had that experience with arts at school or music. Um, I would join theater groups, and um, they would do plays, and then they'd cast you right away. Like, okay, you're going to be the hanging bat on the wall. Well, to me, that was, was a, there was no creativity whatsoever there, and I had no chance to, um, to, to, to grow creatively. It's, it was more like a product. Like, they want to put you on stage. They want your parents to see you. Um, and dress you up, make you nervous, and turn you off of creativity completely, turn you off of the arts. Um, I even found this in university. I, I, against all odds, I, I still wanted to somehow be involved creatively. I didn't even understand why. I took an aptitude test in high school. Do, do you know what that is? Do, to the, find out what you should be. And um, it said to me, 99% uh, in the performing arts field. And I didn't even know what that meant in high school. I was like, okay, whatever. But um, I, I focused on theater because I was a human. I could connect with people. I saw people doing that on stage. So I thought, okay, well, that's how I can express myself. Theater, yeah, that's a good way to go. And uh, I got into a theater program in university, and I actually wanted to be a theater director. I, um, I got into a program with five people. It was a prestigious program. Um, and I quickly realized that I didn't want to be a theater director. <laughs> Even though uh, here I was, uh, you know, fighting odds and taking risks in my, because I didn't really know what to do creatively. And um, I did not want to be a theater director. I thought I would have a heart attack by the time I was um, 30. And it wasn't even really... Um, giving me the artistic freedom that I wanted. I would have to do all this organization. I have to work with actors. I would have to plan all this stuff. And there was no immediate um, sort of connection with people, which I realized later that's what I was really looking for. Um, so one night I dropped acid. I didn't do it many times, but I dropped acid and I said, fuck that program. I'm not going back. <laughs> and, um, but I was still in university, so I, I got to switch courses and I, I decided to try other fields. So um, but, but in the arts. So I, I took a, um, an, an, an art class, 101 art, uh, painting, drawing, sculpture, and beyond. Um, I'd never drawn in my life, and I showed up. Uh, the first day was life drawing. Um, I didn't know what to do. I, I really had never drawn in my life, but I was excited. I was going to draw. Life draw, it's, you know, exciting. Teacher looks over, looks at my drawing and says, you're stupid, in, in that voice that resonates in my head. She did have an English accent. It has nothing to do with anything. She just said it that way. You're stupid. What are you doing? And I, I, was, I was like, I should have walked out of the class right there. I'm obviously not a, um, a, a, you know, illustrator, drawer. But I stayed in the class and waited for the painting part. And great, we have paints and everything. And then she comes over and says to me, 
where's the paint? Where's the paint? And I, the paint was right there. There was yellow, there was green, there was blue. I, I didn't understand, but I thought, should I quit this class? No, 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 I'll continue on, continue on. So then she started talking more about uh, conceptual art and um, found art and found art objects. And I thought that was really exciting. I I'm going to... I'm going to do that. I can do that. So I, um, I got really into it. I found old pieces of pianos and uh, blenders, and I made this huge monster. I th think I even brought it in a day early. I was so excited. And she said, you're brilliant now. What happened to you? So, uh, which was cool. I don't think I was brilliant in this, and I don't think I was completely stupid either because I was taking a chance. But um, it, it was good to know that I could stick with it and, and try something and, and have some sort of uh, success although I, I didn't go into that field. Um, and I graduated university. Um, my mother was very surprised. She didn't even think I would graduate high school, she told me. <laughs> but um, I did, and uh, I needed a job. So I, um, having great um, fine arts skills, <laughs> I got a job at a daycare center teaching kids. Um, it was disgustingly boring, and the teachers were so exhausted and horrible, and they would sit around like, okay, Billy, stop hitting Fred. You know, stuff like that. It was, it was like in slow motion the whole day. And the poor kids had no creative outlet, and they were, they, you could see them bubbling up. They were always acting up, and they were role-playing. So I got this idea. I was starting to play acoustic guitar, um, and I wanted to teach myself more acoustic guitar, so I thought if I could do something with the kids, with acoustic guitar, I could learn to play a little, maybe make some kids happy. And um, I, I stole some kids away, and I uh, started to tell stories to the kids and have them act them out. Um, I didn't say who they had to be, I just gave them some choices. For instance, for example, Peter Pan. I, um, I, I would give them the choices of different characters, Wendy or Captain Hook or Peter, and um, you know, guys could be Wendy, of course, Captain Hook, you could be whatever you want. And then they would get to choose who they were and they would act it out and, and they would role play. And that's how kids learn. And that's how you learn creativity in general. Even as adults, you can learn this way. You can, you have to try and put yourself in that position, model it, try, try it out. Sounds fake, but it's completely not. Because if you don't try something, if you don't take the risk, if you um, don't experiment, you're never going to become who you really are. And that's the whole point of creativity. So I wouldn't even care if there was like 10 Captain Hooks and one Wendy and no Peter Pan. That, that's fine with me. And, and it wasn't a, a show for the parents, so there wouldn't be comments like, oh my God, my son's Peter Pan, what do I do? You know, it was just for their own um, creativity and for their, their, their own enjoyment. And I've, I've met kids now who said that it really helped them to, to come out of themselves and, and, and to be creative. So, Anyways, as I was doing this program, the, um, the daycare center, uh, people who ran the daycare center, uh, had me teach teachers how to be creative with kids, which was amazing because I had no uh, uh, training as um, a teacher at all or any of that stuff. And here I was actually now teaching teachers how to be creative with the kids. So I had, I had no training in that, but I did that, and then I started my own programs teaching kids and role-playing with them, and they loved them, and I thought I'd get fired every day for just looking like crap, but, but um, the kids loved it, and they learned a lot, and I did it for 10 years, and at the same time was learning about my own creativity in the same way because um, kids are a great punk audience. If, if you don't hold their attention or if you, if you don't give them what they want, they'll jump on you, tell you you're ugly, jump, you know, say your breast stinks. And they're like worse than a punk audience. So, I mean, adults are, are, are actually quite, you know, polite, like you guys are being right now, because some of you probably want to yell shit at me and wonder why I'm not singing electro songs or something. So, um, but anyway, so I learned a lot, and um, I had a girlfriend at the time, and we were listening to... Um, it was um, the end of the 80s, early 90s, listening to a lot of <clears throat> Indigo Girls and uh, realizing that the Indigo Girls were gay and we were really excited about that. And um, listening to Melissa Etheridge, she's gay for sure. <laughs> Tracy Chapman, she's gay for sure. And um, we started to play acoustic guitar and sing songs together. And um, we, got, we got a gig at a small uh, club and um, I'd never really played for an audience before, and um, we did really well, and people liked it, and we, we had this weekly gig, so all of a sudden, I was playing folk music 
with my now ex-girlfriend, whom we were singing songs about each other, about how we didn't like each other anymore, and harmonizing, uh, <laughs> singing folk music. And I was like, wow, I guess I'm a musician. I can sing, I'm writing songs, I'm singing folk music. <laughs> so uh, I quit that band. Uh, it was called Mermaid Cafe, after a Joni Mitchell song, by the way. Just, and um, I, I started to experiment with music. I, um, I, w I really loved, you know, like Kate Bush and Nina Hagen, and, and I would, um, you know, sing and express myself, express, express, wear crazy shit, and um, it didn't really go over well with audiences, but for me, it was, it was, a, it was a great experiment. And um, I met a girl named uh, Sticky, and now, now we're like in 90, 91, and we're like, Let's make a riot girl band, yeah. So, so I met her, and um, she said, well, actually, I have two friends. They happen to be guys. Um, one's my next-door neighbor, and he has a, a studio in his basement, and, and the other is this guy I think is a really cool musician. Why don't we just get together and jam? Um, and I was like, I want a girl band. I want a girl band, but I went, and um, these two guys, one's name was Maki, and one's name was Gonzalez, and this girl was Sticky, and I... We didn't say a word to each other. We just started jamming. We, start, we smoked pot, too, but we started jamming, and we just started singing crazy shit about each other, sexual shit, or just, like, anything that came to our mind. And it was so freeing and so exciting because all four of us were in bands and dissatisfied with it, and here we were just... We didn't know each other, and we were just projecting all this awesome shit that we always wanted to say. Like, let's just strip away everything we know about music, everything, and then we started to switch around instruments, and that was so exciting for me. I'd never, I'd never played um, keyboards before. I'd never drummed before. Um, I did play guitar, and Gonzalez told me that um, I sounded like um, uh, the guitar player from the Pixies, so then I was like, oh yeah, that's the coolest thing I ever heard. Um, and that band, we, we decided to name it The Shit, because we thought we were the shit, we, and we, we gave ourselves names, so... Um, that's where I gave myself uh, a name after a Nina Simone um, lyric because Nina Simone was just the, the coolest musician, female, non-female musician that I ever heard of. And for her, at the end of her song, For Women, she says, What do they call me? My name is Peaches. And I wanted her to be singing that to me. So I didn't think that she was going to say, What do they call me? My name is Meryl. So I, I changed my name to Peaches. Yeah. And um, the point of all this, and I, I'm, I just wanted to say, is that you really have to find the creativity within you, no matter all the odds, no matter, you know, I, I know you're all grown up adults, and <laughs> some of you already found your vocation, found your love, but really, really, whatever your passion is inside of you, if you can remember from a kid, that curiosity you have, you have to go through with it. You, you really have to find it. It's only, the only way you're going to become yourself. You're not, that's the only way you're not going to become bitter and all of those things that you hate in people that you want to change. It's the best thing you can do for yourself, best thing you can do for others. I'm sure this is really short right now. I'm probably not even 10 minutes. But you know what, I'd like to try and experiment with you. So I'm glad you all came down here. So uh, could you, you're going to have to go out of the way. And I'm going to need everybody really close to me here. And if you would like to come down now, that'd be fantastic. Because, you know, this is all about losing fear of experimentation, trusting other people. So if you, if you wouldn't come down, then, then you're actually just looking down upon us. And we don't like you anymore. <laughs> no. Okay, well, what I'm going to attempt to do is I'm going to walk on you. Please don't be afraid. I'm very light. Um, I'm just going to do a little change oh, I here. I appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> those, those look scary. <laughs> yeah, I took those off. So I'm going to walk on you. And what I need you to do is I'm just going to need you to hold your hands up. We can try it right now. You're going to have to hold your hands up like this. And you're going to have to be pretty close together. Now... Um, please keep your please please keep your hands flat. That's good. And um, yeah, check out your neighbor how tall or short they are so that you can, you know. Um, so keep your hands pretty flat. Please do not grab my shoe. I'm gonna land on here and just let me walk like you're a floor. 
I will go very slowly. It's going to be awesome. I'm not going to break any of your fingers. Nothing's going to happen to you physically except we're going to have an awesome time. I, already, I, I just want to mention that I already see smiles on your faces. Um, could, I, could I borrow you? You're very tall. Could I borrow you? I'm going to, you're going to, I'm going to, I want to know if I could, um, if, if, I, if I could start with you guys here. Here, if I could use your hand. Yes. Okay. I, it, I'm not, I'm going to walk on you. So, I may use your hands and I'd like to walk and sing some opera to you. When I point, that means I need more hands there. Se morta, se morta mia vita, ed io respiro. Tu, sede me partita, sede me partita per mai più. Mai più non tornare e io rimango. No, no. Che sia vero, se alcuna cosa ponno, non ro sicura più profondi oggi si. E in teneri tutto. Verrei dell'ombra, ne potrà rati, arriva delle stelle. O se ciò negarà mi empio destino, rimarrò teco in compagnia di morte. Addio terra. Adio cielo e sole, adio. Catch me. <laughs> Over there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.